Many of us are already planning our New Year's resolutions to work out more in 2023. But let's face it, they rarely stick. Well, Peloton's got a gift for you. Get up to $200 off accessories like non-slip grip dumbbells, cycling shoes, heart rate monitors, and more with the purchase of a Peloton bike, Bike Plus, or Tread. Don't wait. Get this offer before it ends on December 25th. Visit OnePeloton.com. All access membership separate. Offer ends December 25th. Cannot be combined with other offers. See additional terms at OnePeloton.com. It's time to ditch the chemicals with Caraway Homes non-toxic kitchenware collections so you can make healthier cooking a piece of cake. Caraway's holiday event has been extended so you can get non-toxic kitchenwares at the best prices. Visit CarawayHome.com to take advantage of their cyber season event and score up to 20% off your next purchase of non-toxic kitchenware. This deal won't last long, so visit CarawayHome.com to shop all their incredible products for up to 20% off this holiday season. Caraway. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and those who don't identify as either, you are listening to Ratchet and Respectable with Demetria L. Lucas. So I have good news and I have bad news. Which one do you want first? The bad news, this is our last episode for the year. The offices for my publisher and ad partner are closed for the holidays, so I take the same vacation that they take. I haven't had an episode off since, I think, July. I didn't want to spend my last night in L.A. up editing the podcast, so I took that day off. But otherwise, I've been going nonstop with no breaks for the last six months. And I mean everything from the move to Ghana to bouncing all around these other countries in Africa. Also bad news, I'm leaving Ghana in January. I have a little bit over a month left here. It feels like I'm leaving tomorrow. I already feel a little sad. I'm leaving and going back to Maryland for a little bit. So our Ghana adventure comes to an end. Um, The good news, the podcast will continue into 2023. My contract was up in January. I had no idea if it was going to be renewed. I kind of thought if it wasn't that I would just take six months off. Everyone keeps telling me to write a book or, you know, there's some other projects that I want to work on. So I figured I would just take the time off to do that. Apparently not, which is fine. The book will eventually get written when it's time. I've been talking about writing a third book forever. My agent, bless her heart, was like, you know, when it's time, it's time. And I was like, you're not mad at me? And she was like, for what? It'll get written at some point. The other good news is that I'll be in America for about three weeks. Then I'm packing up and going to South Africa. I'll be staying primarily in Johannesburg, but the same way I did with Ghana, where I kind of use it as a home base so I can roam around other countries. I'm going to do the same thing while I'm in literally the southern half of Africa, just based in South Africa. But I have a list of countries that I want to see and landmarks, locations that I want to experience for myself. So I'm super, super excited about that. Because I'm leaving, I'm like super into Ghana. I had this whole list of things that I wanted to do while I was here. And I did a lot of them, but there's still stuff that I haven't done. But I have this list and I'm trying to check off as many things as I possibly can. So I'm running around Ghana like a mad woman, like I'm never in my house, trying to see and experience and soak up the last bit of the country. I'm also going to the UAE for a while. I told you about that Valentino exhibit in Doha. And then I became obsessed with Doha even before I knew the World Cup was going there. And then I figured if I'm going to Doha, then I might as well go to Dubai. And if I'm going to Dubai, I might as well go to Abu Dhabi. If I could have fit in Saudi Arabia and Oman, I would have done that too next time. But I decided to run off there too before I go back to America. So when I say my time in Ghana is limited, my time in Ghana is limited. The upside though is a bunch of my friends are coming in town for the holidays. Literally in the last, I would say 24 hours, a good eight people have hit me up to say, I'm headed to Ghana. Like, what do I do? What do I see? What do I blah, 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 blah. And I was like, I should probably make a list just to like send to folks. But I know me, I'm probably not going to do that. But yeah, it seems like everyone and their mom is coming for the holidays. It's one of my favorite times of year. The holidays in Ghana are a straight turn up. It's like, CBC next to CBC on top of CBC, adding a splash of the MTV Awards, a bit of ABF and Art Basel because actually Accra Art Week starts next week. But yeah, it's just it's wild. 
and like sexy as fuck. So I'm really looking forward to it. I'm glad that my friends who are coming over will get a chance to experience part of the reason that I fell in Ghana. Ghana in December is amazing, but Ghana year round, except for rainy season. I will never be here in rainy season, God willing. Otherwise, Ghana is pretty amazing year round. So I'm all into like my last bits of travel and still, and still I have FOMO for America. In general, I don't usually have FOMO. I think I had it for the Usher concert, even though I went last year, like he's got a whole new show and I kept seeing people post from it and I was like, damn, I wish I'd been able to see Usher again before I left. So I had FOMO about Usher. There was something else on here that I talked about that I had FOMO about and I don't even remember what it was. But I also have FOMO, like for real FOMO, for this Michelle Obama book tour. She just did a tour date in LA, which I probably would have been at. Oprah interviewed her and I was like, damn, I wish I was home right now. Oprah looks amazing right now. I know she was a spokesperson for Weight Watchers. I obviously haven't seen the commercials because not in America. Um, I don't know if she's still under contract with them, but whatever Oprah is doing right now is working well. Like she looks lovely. She had on this beautiful yellow suit. The waist is snatched. Her hair looked great. Her makeup looked great. Her glasses looked great. Head to toe, she looked fucking amazing. And I was like, all right, Oprah. She's really good. Michelle Obama looked good too. I just, I've been seeing her a lot because she's on book tour. I haven't been seeing Oprah a lot. I do appreciate Michelle Obama's braids more than I think she even knows. Just to have this black woman who is like the face of professional black woman and former first lady walking around in braids, it really does something for, not to say that I felt one way or another about braids, but I'm just thinking about like black women who work in professional spaces. Even some women who were part of the See Some World tours that we just did, they would get braids on the first day. And then by the end of the trip, they were fretting about being able to go to work with braids. Like one of the women on the trip, she got her braids the last Tuesday and she had them taken out on Monday because she was like, I can't go to work with my hair in braids. And I was like, really? I take shit like that for granted. I really do because I haven't had a nine to five since 2011 and my last job was working at Essence. Nobody cared if I showed up in braids. Total non-factor. For all of the Crown Act legislation and even, you know, Michelle Obama walking around in braids, they're still not considered acceptable in some places. But I appreciate Michelle Obama for, for pushing the needle because there's really not a lot you could say. It's like, oh, you have braids. They're unprofessional. Be like, yeah, the first lady of the United States has braids. Come again. I always thought for people who make a big fuss over stuff like that, it's not the braids that are the problem. It's the, the black that's the problem. It's like they still had an issue when your hair was straight or whatever conformist thing that they didn't complain about before. It's just you did something new and now they found something to complain about. But the core issue is not the braids. It's, it's the black. It's the black. Because if a white chick showed up in braids, it wouldn't be the same thing. Like, oh, you went on vacation. You went to Mexico. You got braids. Yeah. You know who else is looking really good lately? Fantasia. I follow Fantasia on Instagram for a while, but you know, like the logarithm doesn't always show you everybody that you follow. Like it shows you random stuff. But I saw this picture of Fantasia. It popped up this morning and I think she posted it probably three days ago. She had on this, it was like a olive leather three piece outfit. It was pants and a really cute shirt, but I loved it so much. I screenshotted it because I was like, God damn, the Fantasia just looks amazing. It was a jacket and then this really cute top, kind of crappy. You can see like a little bit of tummy. And she's got matching gloves. Or is that part of the shirt? I don't know, whatever it is. I'll post it when I post the, um, the advertisement for this episode on my social media. Fantasia looks fucking amazing. She was headed to the I Want to Dance with Somebody Who Loves Me movie premiere. It's the Whitney movie. Another one. I think this is the one that Clive Davis co-signed. I haven't heard anything about it. I doubt it will air here. Not particularly excited about the movie. I think we've talked about this before, how like, you know, like I love Whitney Houston as much as the next person. I'm tired of Whitney Houston movies. What else is there to call from this woman's life? I feel like all the highlights have already been told. Like, what else do we need to know? At some point, it just starts to feel less celebratory and more exploitative. I think we've crossed into the exploitative point. I'll watch it if I hear the reviews are good. And I don't mean reviews from critics. I mean, like when I scroll my Facebook feed, because nine times out of 10, the people I follow on Facebook, even if they're not like other journalists, they're just, you know, people who watch TV and go to the movies. They rarely steer me wrong. Rarely. 
I can't remember an instance that they did, but I'm leaving room for error. If the reviews are good among my Facebook friends, I'll give it a watch. Otherwise, I'm just not that excited about it. I'm more excited about Fantasia's outfit at the premiere than I am about the film. Also, while we're thinking about Fantasia, where is this color purple movie? Fantasia is Seely. Now that, that is something I'm waiting for. Fantasia, the color purple movie. The current release date is December 20, 2023. I guess I just need to sit down and, and wait a minute. I got over a year before I get to see that. Damn it. I thought that was coming like, you know, mid-year or, or spring or some such. What else? What else is going on? We have good black news. Plenty of good black news this week. Trevor Noah. Kind of good black news. He quit The Daily Show. And we talked about that Hollywood Reporter article on Trevor Noah. And they were like, well, why are you quitting? And he was like, I want to basically go run around the world. So he quit The Daily Show. He ended the show last week. We talked about his, his ode to black women. I think it was on the Britney episode. That was his final day at Comedy Central, December 8th. So a little over a week ago. He popped up in Qatar for the World Cup. He braided his hair down. He had some cute cornrows. And I was like, did he ever have cornrows when he was on Comedy Central? I know his hair was low, and then I knew he grew it out, I think, during the pandemic. But I don't ever remember him with cornrows. Cute as he want to be. Cute as he want to be. And I was like, he looked like somebody that just quit their job. <laughs> remember Michelle Obama? She didn't quit. But, there, you know, Barack's term came to an end. And then the next time we saw Barack, he was, like, parasailing with Richard Branson. And Michelle Obama was walking around in hot pants. And I was like, you look like you retired. <laughs> Trevor Noah looks like, you know, Trevor Noah looks like he quit. He did quit. I don't mean he don't, he don't give a fuck like he's not taking care of his personal appearance. I mean, he don't give a fuck like he don't care what people think. You're not on TV every day anymore. I watched Dion Cole's special the other day. We can include this in Good Black News because it's so fucking good. I liked his last special, too. Dion Cole was never really on my radar like that until his, I guess that was his first Netflix special. I didn't know he was that funny. And so because last one was so because the last one was so funny and I didn't even hear about this one. I followed Dion Cole. So I was scrolling on Instagram and I saw that he had posted something about it. And I was like, oh, let me go check it out because I'm late watching it. I was in here howling, howling with laughter. Dion Cole is funny. He is so funny. He's so underrated. Like, I mean, he's got Netflix specials. So clearly, like, he's not completely underrated. Like he's on people's radar, evidently. But he is good. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say he is good and amazing. Whatever woman has been telling women state secrets to Dion Cole so he can go talk about them in Netflix, sis, you ain't have to sell us out like that. He was telling all the 40 plus business. And I was like, sir, 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 these jokes aren't funny. But they were. <laughs> I'm trying not to tell you anything because if you haven't watched it, I don't want to ruin it for you. But it's really, 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 really good. And you should like, you know, as soon as you finish listening to this podcast, go watch Dion Cole's special. Is that good? Dion Cole's special is called Charlene's Boy. His mother is named Charlene. So he does this whole special. I think he filmed it in Brooklyn. He nails it. It's amazing. He gets to the end. He tells the final joke. Everyone is howling. Like he brings everything full circle. And I'm thinking to myself like, yo, he, his name should be mentioned amongst the greats. This is a really amazing special. So he walks off and then he comes back and was like, hey, I'm paraphrasing. But he was like, I just want to you know, tell people that you really never know what people are going through, especially comedians, because our job is to entertain people and make them laugh and make them happy. But we have all sorts of private pains that nobody knows about. So then he says the year has been really hard for him. Several members of his family passed away, including his mother. I should also mention that the comedy special begins with Dion Cole and his mother. They're at a restaurant and someone sitting at the table with them is recording and they have this cute mother son banter. And you could tell she's like just super proud of her son. And then the actual comedy show begins after that. So at the very end, he tells the audience that a year ago, as of the day of taping, his mother died. It's the first anniversary of when his mother died and he's doing this show. And he misses her and he hopes that he made her proud. It was just, it was heartbreaking. 
beautiful, poignant, vulnerable. I thank him for saying it. And, and it was heartbreaking. I hope that he gets nominated for something for this special because he really did a great job. It's up there with Rothaniel. To me, it's a different kind. He has a different kind of comedy than Gerard Carmichael. But I hope that he gets something because he's really in that realm and space in this special, especially the way, you know, he introduced it with his mom and then all the crazy jokes he told and how he ended the special. Like it was a really beautiful piece of humanity and also well-produced television. It was, it was just it was good. That's what I'm trying to say. It was good. Um so after I watched Dion Cole, I'm, I'm in like a comedy mood, right? Um, and also I needed something, I needed like a pick-me-up because of how Dion Cole ended his show. So Trevor Noah has a comedy special on Netflix. I love Trevor Noah. I love Trevor Noah. I think he is hysterical on The Daily Show. I think I watched 10 minutes of his comedy special and I was like, no, it just wasn't funny. Like I wanted to laugh and I just... Like, I didn't even chuckle. And I was like, oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. I love Trevor Noah. I said something about Megan. Megan, Megan. Duchess Megan, not Meg the Stallion. We'll talk about her later. I said something about Duchess Megan last week on the episode. Actually, I asked a question because she didn't know about curtsying to the queen. And I said, I asked, I said, is she an airhead? People came for my throat over that. I like Megan, I think. She has some article. We talked about it on here. I can't remember what magazine it was in, um, but I read it and I was like, this didn't do her no favors. I don't know if I'm soured on her. I'm not angry about her. I'm going to eventually watch Harry and Meghan. As I said, I would on the last podcast. Tons of people were like, you need to watch it. You need to watch it. Don't give up on it. And I was like, yeah, I said I was going to watch it. y'all. Like, I'm going to watch it. We don't have time. It's just not like high priority anymore. I'll watch it, though. Yeah, folks came from my throat. And I was like, yeah, I know y'all love her. It doesn't mean I don't like her. Just because I wondered if she was an airhead doesn't mean she is one. It means exactly what I said. I didn't watch it. I don't know. But I saw clips and saw people discussing it. And I wondered, based on what I saw, is she an airhead? It's a worthy question, I think. Um, Many of you disagreed. That's fine. It happens. It's time to ditch the chemicals with Caraway Homes' non-toxic kitchenware collections so you can make healthier cooking a piece of cake. All Caraway sets come equipped with easy access storage solutions so that no stacking is required. And gone are the days of misplacing your lids. Caraway has the entire kitchen in mind, from cookware to bakeware, tea kettles, and their latest release of food storage. Caraway's holiday event has been extended so you can get non-toxic kitchenwares at the best prices. For the first time ever, you can now save on Caraway's food storage, tea kettle, and mini cookware. This exclusive deal won't last long. Make sure you shop your favorite colors and products while you still can. I love Caraway Homes products, especially how easy they are to clean. Visit Caraway Home to take advantage of their Cyber Season event. And score up to 20% off your next purchase of non-toxic kitchenware. This deal won't last long. So visit CarawayHome.com to shop all their incredible products for up to 20% off this holiday season. Caraway. If you're spending time with loved ones for the holidays, chances are you're going to hear a lot of stories. The ones you love to hear and the ones you've heard too many times. But... Have you ever wanted to help your loved ones document those timeless stories? It can be challenging to write an entire book of life memories, but StoryWorth makes it fun and easy. This is how anyone can write a book about their life. Every week, StoryWorth will email your loved one a single life-related question that you pick from their collection, like what's the bravest thing you've ever done or what's the farthest you've ever traveled? All they have to do is reply with a story. Then, after a year, StoryWorth compiles your loved one's stories, memories, and even any photos into an exquisite hardcover book, creating a valued keepsake. This is something you can pass down in your family that will be cherished for generations. Millions of stories have already been told with StoryWorth because they make the process so simple. 
Get started with your loved one for the holidays. And before you know it, you'll both be cherishing those timeless stories for generations to come. You will find out so much about your family. Like the time my dad went backpacking through Europe. What? Help your family share their story this holiday season with StoryWorth. Go to storyworth.com slash ratchet today and save $10 on your first purchase. That's S-T-O-R-Y-W-O-R-T-H dot com slash ratchet to save $10 on your first purchase. Storyworth.com slash ratchet. Whitney Houston's voice defined a generation, and even after her death, her talent remains unmatched. But her incredible success hid a deeply private pain. Even the Rich is a podcast from Wondery that tells the jaw-dropping stories about the tumultuous lives of the world's elite, from the greatest family dynasties to pop culture superstars. The newest season explores how Whitney Houston seemingly had it all. She was stunning and her voice angelic, described as a once-in-a-generation talent. Despite this, she felt trapped between worlds, black versus white, R&B versus pop, gay versus straight. She meant something different to every person, every fan. As the pressure mounted, drugs became her only respite. But soon enough, addiction took control and stole her from the world decades before her time. Even the rich chronicles Whitney's rise to pop prominence and her infamous fall from grace, revealing the lesser known stories behind Whitney's demise. I love even the rich because they get all the details. You think you know about a story? Listen to even the rich. You find out you didn't know the whole story. Follow Even the Rich wherever you get your podcast. You can listen ad-free on the Amazon Music or Wondery app. And other good black news, Harvard has its first black president. She's a Haitian-American woman. I'm pulling up her name. All I remember is her last name was Gay, and I thought it was saying that, like, she was black and gay. I don't know what her sexuality is, nor do I care in the context that it makes no difference to me about whether she should be appointed or whether she can do her job. Harvard president, Haitian. Her name is, her name is Claudine Gay. I think she's the first black president of an Ivy. Is that accurate? Let's see what the Washington Post had to say. She's the 30th president at Harvard. She's the daughter of Haitian immigrants. She joined the Harvard faculty in 2006. And she will take office on July 1st. Gay earned a bachelor's degree in economics from Stanford University in 92. She has a doctorate in political science from Harvard's government department in 98. She was on the Stanford faculty from 2000 to 2006 before joining the Harvard faculty. Let's see, CNN has a story as well. A bunch of places have a story. This is from CNN. They said Gay is the first person of color and the second woman to hold the role of Harvard University's president. Good for her. There's good black news from Angela Bassett. She's getting a bunch of awards. She's getting the Creative Impact Award from Variety. She's getting a Career Achievement Award from Critics' Choice. And she's also been nominated for a Golden Globe for Supporting Actress for her role in Wakanda Forever. This is the first Golden Globe for a Marvel actor or actress. Black Panther was nominated, I think, for Best Picture for a Golden Globe. But other than that, Golden Globes haven't really acknowledged the Marvel Universe. There was a really good article in The Hollywood Reporter that was breaking down the Golden Globes. They announced the nominees, I think, on Monday. We had a lot to talk about on Monday, so I didn't get this part in. They put a lot of context for the nominations. It's like a ton of Black people nominated. Jeremy Pope, Niecy Nash, Angela Bassett. And I got to wait for the article to reload to tell you about everybody else. Okay, what do we have here? This is from The Hollywood Reporter. Abbott Elementary took the crown for most nominated TV series with six nominations, including four for performance, all of which went to black members of the show's ensemble. 
I know Cheryl Lee Ralph was one of them. Quinta was also nominated, as was, what's the guy from Everybody Hates Chris, who's all grown up now? He got nominated for one as well. Who was the fourth person? It doesn't specifically name them in this article. Let's see. There's a bunch of first-time nominees. I'm going through the list. I'm trying to find all the black people. Janelle James. That's the fourth person from Abbott Elementary. Jeremy Pope for the inspection. I've not watched the inspection. I'm obsessed with Jeremy Pope, which means I'm going to eventually have to go watch the inspection. He's one of those people I watch anything that he's in right now, along with Yaya and um, Jonathan Majors. Like anything that they're in, I'll go give it a whirl. They're like my version of Denzel. My mother will watch anything with Denzel in it unless, unless she suspects that Denzel might not survive the movie and then she will not watch it. She wants nothing to do with it. Niecy Nash, we mentioned her earlier. She was nominated for Dahmer. This is her first nomination. Rihanna was nominated for Black Panther for the song Lift Me Up. Ryan Coogler for Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Is that as a songwriter? Because I know he wrote that song along with the Rihanna. Oh, yes, that's probably it, because Tim's is also nominated, and she's listed the same way. Zendaya for Euphoria. Tyler James Williams. That's Everybody Hates Chris. I really need to learn this man's name, because I actually like him a lot. We talked about the way he escorted Cheryl Lee Ralph to the stage, and I was like, that young man was raised well. Who else? Actress Angela Bassett, who plays Queen Ramonda, has garnered the MCU's very first acting nomination at the Globes and first ever in the category of Best Actress. I thought she was nominated for Supporting. Correction, she was not. She was nominated for Best Actress, not Supporting. Where did I read Supporting? My bad. I think that's it for the Black folks, but that's a good chunk of names. I know there could always be more. If I think real hard about it, I'd probably suggest some other people that should have been nominated, but... Nothing pops in my mind as of this moment. I reserve the right to change my mind at some point. Thanks. But congratulations to all the Golden Globe nominees, especially the Angela Bassett. I told y'all when I watched Black Panther in French when I was in Abidjan, I was like, I don't know what she said, but I I felt the emotions. I saw everything that I needed to see on her face. I was so proud of myself. Like I literally understood the film, even though it was in French. When I finally saw it, I was like, oh, I missed like nuances. But I was like, I, I, overall, I understood it. I was so pleased with myself. <sighs> now we got to talk about, let me say this before I say that. Twitch, Stephen Boss, he was best known as Ellen's DJ. He was also well known as like a family man. He was married with three kids. He was an amazing dancer. Um, a couple days ago, he checked himself into a hotel And he died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. I know a lot of people who who knew him personally, who were good friends with him. They've expressed nothing but um, sadness and loss, uh, disbelief. Like it's, it's really hitting them and other people who just heard the story very, very hard. On Wednesday... His wife, Allison, released a statement to People magazine. She said, quote, it is with the heaviest of hearts that I have to share that my husband, Stephen, has left us. Stephen lit up every room he stepped into. He valued family, friends and community above all else. And leading with love and light was everything to him. He was the backbone of our family, the best husband and father and an inspiration to his fans. To say he left the legacy would be an understatement and his positive impact will continue to be felt. I am certain there won't be a day that goes by that we won't honor his memory. And she concluded, Stephen, we love you. We miss you. Oh, God. Shouldn't read stuff live on here. I hadn't read the statement before. We love you. We miss you. And I will always save the last dance for you. Their children are three, six, and 14. I can't imagine the pain that his wife and children are in. I've seen the pain that my my friends are in, just people who who knew him, some actual friends, others professionally. But there's a, a deep, deep mourning and expressions of grief across many circles right now. But I'm seeing it primarily on the internet. 
when it was announced that he had died, I um that's how I found out. I was scrolling on Instagram, but like ten pictures in a row were all people writing tributes to him, expressing their grief over his passing, expressing their condolences to his family. I feel awful for them. I also feel awful for whatever pain that he was experiencing, that he felt that taking his life was was the best option for him or an option at all. I think I've talked about, and maybe I haven't, I've spoken about it before though. When I was in going to the ninth grade, in a six-week span, two of my friends committed suicide. I think they were both 14 at the time. I went to a really tiny school, and the woman, girl, because she was 14, Shalik Alexander, I loved her. She was a big sis to me, even though she was only a year older. But I remember there was an episode of Sex in the City, and I think Carrie described Natasha, Big's wife, who he chose you know, over her, as the kind of woman that wears white and never spills on it. Shalik was that kind of teenager. And the last time I saw her, I think her brother, she had an older brother who was coming to pick her up early from, we were in basketball camp together that summer and she was going to a Jodeci concert. And that was like in June. And she killed herself in August. It's been 30 years since that happened. And all that time, I don't think more than a month has passed that I haven't thought about her. The guy, um... His name was Alan. I don't remember his last name. I only knew him for six weeks. He was new to our school. He killed himself the weekend before homecoming. He was an awkward kid. And it was before like you had the Best Buy Geek Squad and the rise of like the techie guys where being a nerd is considered cool. He was bullied at our school and he'd come from another school where he'd been bullied even worse. That's why his parents pulled him out of there and sent him to a new school. And we went to like a teeny tiny prep school. I want to say there was like 150 people between grade six and 12. But he was still bullied pretty bad. Um, I did not bully him. The story I got was that he went out into a field one day, Saturday afternoon, and shot himself in the head. And that afternoon, I got a call. And that afternoon, like, I don't know, three, four o'clock, I got a call from the school chaplain. And she told me that he killed himself. And it was just like crazy because like we were all still reeling from like Shalik's death six weeks earlier. And I might be being generous and saying six weeks. It might have been more like five. Yeah. I don't do too well with suicide stories. I know another one. It's not my story to tell. It's my best friend's brother. I guess he was like in his late 20s. Um, He went in the backyard one day and shot himself in front of his wife. Um, I think they were going through a divorce at the time. Yeah. Again, I don't do too well with suicide stories. There's a lot that I would say privately about this that I won't say publicly. I just wanted to acknowledge Twitch's passing. It's a pop culture podcast and we talk about things that the culture is talking about, but I can't really talk about it in depth. I just, you hear hear me over here trying not to cry again over things that happened 30 years ago. When you know someone who's done that, it sits on you. Yeah, we need to move on to another topic. Many of us are already planning our New Year's resolutions to work out more in 2023. But let's face it, they rarely stick. Well, Peloton's got a gift for you. Get up to $200 off accessories like non-slip grip dumbbells, cycling shoes, heart rate monitors, and more with the purchase of a Peloton bike, Bike Plus, or Tread. Don't wait. Get this offer before it ends on December 25th. Visit OnePeloton.com. All access membership separate. Offer ends December 25th. Cannot be combined with other offers. See additional terms at OnePeloton.com. This episode is sponsored by LifeMD. LifeMD has undeniably created a better and more affordable way for people to speak to doctors without leaving their home. The days of depressing waiting rooms, awkward in-person visits, and confusion on who to call are over. You can now video chat with a board-certified physician and get the prescription you need in as little as 15 minutes. Visit LifeMD.com slash Ratchet today and see why LifeMD is America's most trusted leader in virtual healthcare. There are a zillion times when LifeMD would have made my life so much easier. When I'm not at my best, going to the doctor can be such a hassle. 
we all know how frustrating it can be to find the right doctor. It can be hard to even know where to begin. LifeMD's patient platform and app make it so easy. All you have to do is select your symptoms, pick your preferred doctor, and LifeMD does the rest. Visit LifeMD.com slash Ratchet now or download their app and see why LifeMD is America's trusted telehealth leader. That's LifeMD.com slash Ratchet to experience healthcare the way it should be. Diddy defended Carisha. We talked last episode about how Diddy announced that he had a baby with a woman. Diddy 53, woman, I think 28 or 29. But he had a baby with this woman in October. And he announced it last week. And the internet went crazy. A lot of people attacked Carisha. Like she was the one who impregnated somebody. And then hit a baby for two months. No, no, no. No, 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 no. She flipped out on social media. I think I referred to it as a meltdown when I mentioned it on social media. And people just been mad at me this week. I mean, it is what it is. It happens sometimes. Because I said, like, I was like, oh, I was like, she's having a meltdown on social media. Like, she went back and forth with DJ Academics, which we talked about last week. We don't need to rehash that. And then she was, like, going off on, on random people. And then she got into it again with one of the other women that, that Diddy dates. I think she called her, like, an eater. <laughs> she said, you're a munch. He, he just uses you to... I clean it up. Perform fellatio and cunnilingus like you're an eater. <laughs> she went the fuck off. And when I said, I was like, yo, she's having a meltdown right now. People were like, she's not having a meltdown. Like she's rightfully upset at people because they keep coming at her and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, but, like she keeps saying how unbothered she is. But I was like, all of this, like cursing people out on social media is very much giving bothered. It's not giving original Omarion when he was like, I don't feel no ways about it. I like guess it's, it's not it's not giving Zen. It's, it's not giving I'm at peace. It's giving angry, frustrated, it feeling in a way. And, and let me also say this. I think that's normal. I am of Gen X. I'm on the cusp of millennial, but I'm, I'm technically Gen X. And there are times like this when the, when the distinction between the two is really, really evident. I'm not from the generation that pretends we just don't have feelings and like everything is ice cold. I mean, ice cold is from Andre 3000, who's Gen X. But still, he, he said the shit. We didn't take it on as like a personal philosophy and way to live your life. It's just a general observation. And of course, this doesn't apply to everyone. But I would just say like as an overall collective of, of the generations after X. Well, it's this thing where people like to pretend because that's what it is, that people don't have feelings. Like, you should just be able to say anything about anyone, and you should be able to say it to them. Very crazy, tragic things should happen, and people just like to pretend that you shouldn't feel anything about it. But all these people walking around with like, oh, she has no feelings, like, Carisha doesn't care. Yes, she does. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's not a bad thing. People have feelings. Humans have feelings. All these people coming at her at the same damn time over some shit Diddy did. Feelings. You go to an award show and you hold up a sign that says go poppy or whatever it said supporting this man. That's more than somebody you just get dick from. And that's more than somebody who's just a business partner to you. You like him. Maybe you're not in love with him. Maybe you're just infatuated. It's very, very clear to me that Carisha wants him to like her too. She also very much wants people publicly to think he likes her too. But she has feelings and that's okay. And I'm not saying anything's wrong with her flipping out on the internet. Like I totally get it. But to pretend that she's not having a meltdown over the guy that she's into having a kid with someone else. I mean, yes, they're dating. We talked about last week. No, she's not a side chick. There's no main chick for her to be a side chick too. It's pretty clear to me that Diddy had a baby with this woman, but they're not in a serious relationship. She's just somebody he's dating too. Just like the other woman that he's been, that he was wandering around Harlem with the same week that he announced he had a baby with somebody else. This is a messy shit show, but everybody's consenting adults and Carisha could walk at any time. Kind of, kind of. Diddy's her boss. If she walks, will, will she still have her podcast, which raised her profile real big? I don't know. She ain't gonna be broke. She could sell some of the shit he bought her if it's in her name, which I hope it is. And that it's not least that it's actually paid off. She also does have a whole rap career. But yeah, she's, she's kind of rocking a hard place. Like he does some shit and people did come for him, no doubt. But I feel like people came for her really, really hard. And she's like, I didn't, I didn't you know, have a baby with nobody. Like what the fuck? He did that shit. Fair. I'm not saying it was wrong for her to go off. I completely understand why she would have a meltdown over this situation. I would. 
Again, I have feelings. I know nobody else in the world does, but I actually have feelings so I can relate to people clearly expressing they have feelings. Is it in a healthy way? Not necessarily, but you know, you'll get to the healthy part. Right now, she's just mad. It's evident. She's not having a meltdown. She's cursing people out on fucking Twitter. She's having a meltdown. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying she has feelings and that's okay. After DJ Academics called her a side chick, Diddy did get on the internet and tweet in her defense. He said, uh, young Miami 305, that's Carisha, is not my side chick. Never has been, never will be. She's very important and special to me. And I don't play about my shorty wop. I don't discuss things on the internet and I will not start today. Sir, if you're not aware, you tweeting this. This is, this is currently you discussing it on the internet. I don't, I don't know what your version of discussing is. Maybe you're not having a long discussion, but this is actually discussing it on the internet just as a technicality. He continued about the topic that he's not discussing on the internet. This is a whole separate tweet. So think what you want, but know that if you do something to hurt mine, I'm going to come to your house and we're going to talk about it like human beings. Love, because that's his name. I'm going to say exactly what I said on social media. I don't understand it. And, and maybe it's just not for me to understand. They, they added us to the group chat. He's the one that made an announcement about the kid. Nobody knew about the kid. At least the press didn't or the public didn't until he actually, you know, tweeted that this child was born in October. Like, sir, you invited us to the group chat. And then when we start responding to the group chat, you get mad. Um, okay. And now he's threatening people. I think that was thinly veiled for DJ Academics. I just want to be clear to recap. Y'all are not in a relationship, but she's very important and special to you to the point that you will, you will send a veiled threat to another man to come to his house and quote and unquote, talk about it like human beings over this woman who you're just dating and also just had a baby with somebody else. Okay. If they like it, then they like it. I don't, it's not for me to understand. My head hurts trying to figure this out. It just seems very messy to me, but it ain't my life. It ain't my life. Last but not least, last but not least, last but not least. And Tori, Tori Lanes, Tori Lanes is on trial. I have to keep Reminding people of that. Tory Lanez is on trial. Tory Lanez is on trial. Tory Lanez is on trial because he's accused of shooting Meg the Stallion in her feet. Tory Lanez is on trial. Megan, Megan is not on trial. Megan didn't shoot anybody. There's no question as to whether Megan shot somebody. There is a good half chunk of the internet that is trying to figure out, did Tory shoot Meg? Because it does seem so. There's another half of the internet that is far more fascinated and who Megan did or did not sleep with and what she has or has not lied about in this case. Now, in fairness to these people, Megan has not always been publicly truthful about things that have happened. Initially, she said she stepped on glass when she talked to the police. She said, Tory's a black man. This is the height of Black Lives Matter, George Floyd. She said the police came. She didn't want Tory to be killed by the police or, or go to jail. So she protected him and she didn't say, this nigga shot me, which sounds absolutely fucking crazy. But look at what happened to her when she came out and was like, Tori shot me. People turned on her. People have been at her throat for years over this shit. It totally makes sense to me why she would have lied in the beginning because she don't want to deal with this shit. Meg does this interview on Gail King, which in retrospect, I was like, why would she do it if she wasn't going to tell the truth, knowing it was going to go to trial and it was going to come out later? Maybe she didn't think Gail King was going to ask her that. Like as someone who's done morning TV, they don't tell you the questions in advance. They give you an idea of the things that they'll ask you about, but they don't give you like a list of questions so you can pre-plan how you're going to respond. That's what your publicist is for, to help prep you for these kinds of questions. So Gail King asked Megan, like, point blank, did you have a sexual relationship with Tory Lanez? And Megan said, no, I would have lied too. Everybody got, well, let me speak for myself, because apparently not. The way people acted on the internet, apparently me and Megan are the only people that have ever slept with somebody that they was like, fuck, what was I thinking? Apparently it's just me and Megan. Nobody else has any regrets about anybody they've ever had sex with. 
Okay, that's fine. I'm just to tell you as the other person that's done that, I completely understand why she would lie about that shit. Because there's one, I was just like, girl, why? Like, what were you thinking? Like, D, D. I was in a bad place too. Megan's mother and grandmother died, I want to say, if not in the same year, the same month. I think when I read that Forbes cover story on her, they said it was the same month. But she said that she was deep in grief. And she said she and Tori used to hang out. They used to drink together. And that's how they, you know, started doing whatever they were doing. She says, I'm embarrassed. I think on the stand, I don't have the direct quote in front of me, but she was like, I'm like ashamed. And she was like, I gave my body to someone who thought so little of me that they shot me. That's, that's embarrassing. And people, in fairness, are like, she's been caught in lies at least twice. First she said he didn't shoot her, then she said she did. Then she said she didn't sleep with him, and then she said she did. I get it. Even though, like, I understand why she would have done it, I understand that it doesn't sound all that trustworthy. I do. But somebody shot the woman. She had bullet fragments in her feet. Did Tori shoot her? Did the best friend shoot her? Who shot her? That's what Tori's on trial for. And at the end of the day, that's all I really care about. I don't really get why she would sleep with him. I don't really get a lot of things in life. I don't get why I slept with some people. Okay. But did he shoot her or did he not shoot her? People are more interested in this woman's sexual history than they are on whether she got shot. As long as everybody was of age and was consenting adults, which by all accounts, that's what happened. I don't care. I don't care. It's titillating. It's head scratching. But in comparison to who shot Meg, it really pales. Focus, people. Fucking focus. That is the episode, the last episode of the year. For the next two weeks, I'll be rerunning my favorite episodes, my favorite interviews. So even if you're a faithful listener and you've already heard them, please give it a click so my numbers don't tank for the last two weeks of the year. Thank you in advance. Also, I wish you happy holidays. I wish you a happy new year. Take care of yourselves. I'll still be in Ghana next time we speak in the new year. I'm traveling at the very beginning of next year before I go back to the States. So I think that's probably not everything, but that's what we've got. All right. Talk next year. Bye.